Gaming Division. Salutations, everyone. I am Cam Ryan. This is Gaming Division. We're going to here today to do an unboxing for Ninja All Stars. If you back the Kickstarter, you got a bunch of stuff. And I want to show you what that stuff was and why you could be motivated to back projects in the future. If there are projects that you believe in out there, by all means, support them. Even pre-order if that's the only way to do it. Just don't blindly do it because that's what's happening. I'm begging you. Stop pre-ordering shitty games. Alright, so in this perfectly sealed box that I happen to have with me, uh, that I've not opened previously and looked at with uh, some children to see what was in the box that we were so excited about. Um, uh, there is bags of stuff and cardboard and more cardboard. And then there is a very fancy bit. I'm actually just going to throw it on the floor because this is my place. Oh. oh. Uh. So in this box... Let's just do this. Is another box. I mean, I like boxes, but you gotta really like boxes to go through this. Ugh. All right, and all that's left in there is styrofoam. So we've got the big important box. Completionist Edition box. I don't remember what it's actually called. Um, Ta-da! And if you could guess what's on the back... Donkey Kong! I, I don't know why Donkey Kong, but it's Donkey Kong! With a Kenochi lady up top, uh, and a Kaiken with a hammer, jumping barrels. <laughs> it's a neat box! But I, I, I am slightly regretting that I am not getting all the, the boxes I would normally get. Though, as I say that, all the Super Dungeon Explorer stuff, who, uh, by, the same, by the same thing, these are the same people who make that game. Uh, it's all sitting in a bin together. Uh, so when you get this, you do get like a little pamphlet thing that I don't know why companies do this. We have the internet, we don't need this. But it has advertisements for Relic Knights, Super Dungeon Explorer, Ninja All-Stars, even though this is that. And uh, Tentacle Bento and Karate Fight. Um, along with uh, Dead Fellas. Um, now, I think it's just they make this for all their games and put it in there and that's that. So, yeah, we'll put that there. Um, okay. One of the things that I like about Ninja All-Stars, and one of the reasons I backed it in the first place, was that... Okay, so one of the reasons that I backed Ninja All-Stars in the first place was that it seemed like Blood Bowl without the ball to me. And part of the evidence of that is these uh, league sheets. Um, so these are your, for your ninja team that you make up. Apparently they've got like a number of things. Um, looks like they got one-on-one -on -one stats on the back. But uh, so you put your ninja teams here, and you keep track of their XP and the powers they gain, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, because this is designed to play continuously and not just in a one-off fashion. Um, and and so is Blood Bowl ultimately. Uh, as a bag, I did when I did not open this up before. I did prearrange some things uh, just to make it a little bit easier once I got back in. Um, so. Oh, I'm so tempted to get to that. So let, let me take a, a break here and go through what I put in this bag. Ugh. So the first thing that's notable are these silly rings. These rings are affixed around the bases, and they're supposed to nominate powers and abilities. So these are obviously for the, the larger bases. They're rubbery, they stretch, and they bend um, so that they can wrap around the base properly. I'll demonstrate that in a bit. There are also... Make me hungry like Fruit Loops or something. Uh, smaller ones for the smaller bases. Uh, and I think they're going to put out another pack of these because I think they determine for people who buy a lot of the models, um, there may or may not be enough rings. Um, and that was them, if I'm remembering that correctly. Um, okay, the other thing is, is that we've got these dice. And this is how their battle system works. Essentially, you roll these, and if opposite symbols show up, let's see if I can remember. Uh, I don't 
I can't remember. It, wind and fire. If wind and fire cancel each other out, then you ignore matches on these, and then you go and uh, evaluate the dice that did not cancel each other out, and the winner uh, wins that strike or ability check, whatever it is. Because it's a pretty uh, complex game. Uh, not complicated, complex. Uh, there's a difference. Complicated is uh, just unnecessary. It's got too many moving parts. It's hard to follow. Complex means that there are a lot of moving parts, but it helps make the game better. Uh, and I guess you really can't determine that until it's out in the world and taking its first baby steps. All right, and I've got a couple cameras here, so I'm going to try to show off a couple of things. Uh, these... Now, there's different kinds here. The When you get, like, the starter sets, there are the shrines, and then there are the clans. Um, so, like, there's the Void Shrine right there. Um, so it shows, like, the Chunin, the Kaiken, uh, the Midoshi, uh, what's the other one? Yajiri, which are, like, range guys, Kenochis, and Oni. They're, they're basic stats for the shrines. And then there's also a clan one. So this is the Ijin clan, which is basically the demon clan. Um, yeah, it's and there's six versions of that. There's uh, void, water, um, I think it's wind. They do a lot of bow stuff. Uh, spirit, fire, and oh, this one's spirit. What's the other one? Earth. Let's do that again. So there's also six versions of these. There's uh, void, there's water, wind, earth, fire, and spirit. And when their powers combine, it's a friggin' bloody mess because there's just Give me dead people everywhere. Or at least a lot of ninja fighting. Shinobi! The unseen. So let's get these. Go in your pouch. We also have several cards that are included. Um, the moon cards that are there, I know these are part of the official game, uh, but I can't remember in what capacity. I think they are ability cards. I own a knife again. You would think. You would think. Brr. Yay. So, like, for instance, Fusion's Breath. After a roll is made, play this card to re-roll a Earth result. Air Moon, during combat, instead of re-rolling a uh, Earth result, add a die to your roll with a Wind result instead. Um, so there are several cards like that where I think these are essentially your re-rolls, if you're familiar with Blood Bowl. So instead of having re-rolls, you have special cards you can play to affect things. Um, you also have character cards. Uh, this one should be a lot easier to open up. These should give you the basic rules. Like, the, the big cards give you, like, basic stats. But for your special characters, your, your Ronin, if you will. Uh, like Bomachan here. Movement 7, attack 3, defense 2, uh, KB 22. I cannot remember what KB is supposed to mean. Um, and then, obviously, Void. Uh, she's got a couple of abilities. It's on the back of the cards, just like Super Dungeon Explorer. Backstab, Hero, Ijin's Horns, Nimble, Resilient. Uh, I'm not going to go and explain every rule here. But as you can see, there is a lot of uh, Ronins. There's even like Arachne people. I'll show that down there. Um, and uh, I'm very excited about looking through and, and figuring out who I would want on a team and... Uh, I, I'm leaning heavily towards uh, Void at this point, just because uh, they seem to be the most interesting. So, 
Uh, in addition to this special Ronin, there are also uh, some clan-specific Ronin uh, that... Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. So some of these are more of that. Um, and then we also have the colorless ones who are just kind of heroes for hire. Um, including cat people. There's a chicken guy. There's a kappa, which is a Japanese imp. Um, he looks like a turtle. Um, there's the girl from the ring. Um, stealth cola. Uh, <laughs> there's some penguin looking guys. Uh, so candy and cola are in this game, uh, as different characters. Um, now here we hit a familiar territory, uh, because we have super dungeon explore cards. This game is theoretically compatible with Super Dungeon Explorer. Um, I've got more cards for those two. Uh, arcade, mini boss, and hero cards. Um, we've got elemental affinities. So if they are Earth and uh, Ninja All-Stars, they're immune to status effects in Super Dungeon Explorer. And then we have, like, basic uh, holder cards for Yajiri, Oni, Madoshi, Kenochi, Aiken, Kunin. Uh, Elemental Shrines, which are their uh, spawning points, because they're going to be bad guys. Um, and then we've got some additional heroes, which I didn't even realize was going to be a thing. <gasps> the Gun Lady! Okay, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. There is a, a gun-wielding uh, ninja, which is quickly becoming one of my favorites. And then the, the guy with the basket on his head and the spear I like. Um, so there's some some basic ninja heroes that you can use as well. And they have a bunch of arcade bad guys. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really looking forward to incorporating ninjas into uh, Super Dungeon Explorer as well. I think that'll be a good time. <laughs> um, all right. All right, I took a moment and clear all that away because I'm going to need the room. Uh, okay, so what I did not open, and I should, I feel stupid that I didn't do this, uh, was the, the board package. Um, but real quick for you that... I'm going to show off the book. Uh, I'm not going to, like, take you through every page and be like, oh, look at the awesome art that's in there, and look at, let me read all these rules to you. I'm not even going to pause the video to read the rules and get a better grip on the game. I know the basics of the game. Uh, I have to take some time and learn these, because this is essentially, if you play 40K or Blood Bowl, uh, like the Codex. This is a rule set. It's got clan and... Uh, Character specific stuff all throughout it. It's thick. I mean, I don't know if you can see this. It's more than a dollar's worth, it's about a dollar's worth of quarters, uh, if you want to look at it like that. This is, and it's, it's heavy. It's good weight paper. They didn't skimp on that, which I can appreciate. Um, but that, that means it's a lot to go through. Um, so we're going we're gonna to move past that and we're going to get onto this, this board. I own a knife again. I know where some scissors are. I know where a box cutter is. But those are all in different rooms. And as I look around, I see a screwdriver set. But, I mean, you got to be able to overcome something small like a bit of plastic. Ooh, what is that? Otherwise, why bother with life? Okay, so, Ninja All-Stars. What this looks like is a point counter. This is a game for one to four players. <coughs> this is a game for one to four players, so it actually makes sense that it has um, four score charts on there. And I don't know if that's supposed to be to number of deaths or objectives or whatever, but this very much looks like how Blood Bowl is. You've got um, a reserve section, a training section uh, for, for either side or, or whatnot. So... If people get knocked out, that's that's where they go. 
very much like Super Dungeon Explorer, we've got this neat uh, bot. We've got this neat board of tokens uh, <laughs> with all kind of cute ninja faces on it, including uh, one throwing up. So uh, they definitely did not deviate from that. There's another one that has different stuff on it, uh, which is very interesting. Um, here's another board with the, the reserves. Um, I guess this is for two on, or one on one versus adding that one for whatever. Uh, it could be different missions require different things. Uh, the thing that I'm excited about revealing is the board. Now there are two boards. This is double sided. So here is a basic ninja village. It looks like, and I would say this is closer to being like an imperial palace. Uh, if you'll notice, the the trees uh, have little tree symbols on there, so they're actually hidden terrain. Water has water symbols. Um, buildings have have little building symbols. And unlike a lot of games where you go uh, in the squares, you're actually going from vertice to vertice here. So that is a very interesting difference. And. Um, it is a large board. It's hard to fit on the camera properly. So, but I am going to put it down on the table here. And we're going to go ahead and put models on top of that. So that will help you give you a proportion of what's going to happen with the models as you put them on the board and uh, everything else. It is a cute picture. I mean, you can't say it's not. So I'm going to open the sealed box, and uh, we'll see what's inside in a completely non-ordered fashion. Um, I definitely did not open this up and put all the gray models together uh, along with the, the different colors. So I'm going, to, I'm going to pull out all the bags so I can get rid of this box, because uh, it's just in the way right now. But this is how they sent it to, to me in a big box. And I'm pulling out colors that look like they go together, but I'm going to clarify that. In just a moment. It just never ends, right? It's just the box that never ends. Okay, the thing I'm going to start with is they sent these two... I don't know why they made these. I don't know why this is a thing. But they, they there's two ninja trophy statues uh, that I really want to incorporate into my everyday life. Just because they're they're that funny and ridiculous. These are the, the golden gusses of uh, ninja hood. So we'll put one there. That one there. Uh, look, I'm an interior designer. No? Okay. Okay. Alright, um, so I pulled out a lot of stuff there. I'm going to show you why it's not as impressive. It's, I mean, it's still fairly impressive. Let's not be wrong. Okay, I hold my hand six bags. I'm only going to unbox one of these bags because they are all the same bag in different colors. And if you paint your models, then you know you've got to paint them differently anyway, so it doesn't matter which set you buy because it's literally the same set of models because these are the, the shrine clans or the shrines where these are just basic guys to, to do things. And I'm going to break them out and I'm going to show you kind of what's up. So... Uh, just because I think they'll show up better, I'm going to do the purple ones, and we're going to actually set the rest of these to the side. Nope, that's not what wanted to happen. Samurai down! I prefer when they're pizza cats. Of course, unpainted models, easy to pack and ship this way. Uh... Storing all these models is going to be a feat. So we're going to go to the GoPro. Um, we've got some different guys here. Like, we've got the little bowmen. Uh, actually, the guy in the hat is a Madoshi. I know that one for a fact. Uh, and then the, the little swordsmen are Kaiken. So there should be three Kaiken. Yep. Three little sword dudes, and then there's going to be three Yajiri, two Yajiri, apparently. Um, the ninja ladies with short swords are Kanochi, and then that's got to be a Chunin. Uh, the Chunin's kind of like a squad leader, the Madoshi's the, 
the mage, if you will. The bowmen are bowmen. They're your range fighters. The kaiken are your short range fighters. And your kochis are your speed and uh, stealth specialists. They are the ones that you're going to have running objectives, typically. Uh, they're going to be high movement, low defense, low attack, but they're going to have some kind of special ability to set it all. Um, and, yeah, low battery. So that, and that's what they look like on the board. You can see up there, too. Uh, maybe they don't show up the best, especially on the, the circles. Um, and the tune is kind of like a, a veteran. He's a squad leader. Now, if we break out the other side of this, You've got a couple extra special guys. You've got these big Oni, uh, which I believe, yeah, they got to go like this. Uh, and they take up four squares worth. Um, but these guys are crazy big compared to the, the normal size guys. They're about twice as big. They're four times the base size. Um, and these guys just are, have, are horny guys with big uh, spike clubs. Um so they're they're kind of interesting looking. Um, you've got for the Ijin clan, which is what I'm looking at. You've got little crossbow guys. Uh, you've got more Kaiken, which are just little swordsmen. Um, oh, I for, did forget something here. Uh, one of the only damages that I had in the entire box, which actually is really impressive. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm irritated that I had to deal with it, but um, it, it's in here. So we've got like three Kenochi, and they're all spiky with they have tails now. They don't have tails. Then everybody's got horns because that's what they do. Uh, there's this guy, I assume is a Midoshi. Uh, his pal here had his foot twisted off at some point, and I think it was just shipping problem. Uh, and we've got the Chunin here. He's got two swords, just like the other Chunin. Um, I'm going to put them front and center for comparison right there. Uh, and then we've got two special characters. I can't remember their names. It's like Yobachan and uh, Komachan. Um, but she's like dual-wielding maces, and he is a fist type, it looks like. Um, I'm going to them over. So you get at least two special characters per clan. Uh, then you have all the air shrine for additional support if you want that. Um, and this is what one clan is. There's six of these uh, to, that, I, that I have. Plus the gray stuff, which is what I'm going to go through next. Um, I'm not sure what these are. I'm pretty sure that these... Lantern or Shrine things are for Super Dungeon Explorer. That's fine. I'll pull one out. Try to show it off real quick. Um, yay! It's a very Japanese looking lamp. Street lamp looking thing. Um, the other thing they have are these uh, Shrine Lanterns. And I'm not sure what these are for. I think these are for Ninja All-Stars, but I don't know what the, what the, the point of them is. Maybe they may be for capturing objectives or whatever. Um, one of the things they did, and I actually had two bags of these, is they ended up uh, giving me a bunch of samurai who were supposed to be like NPC guardsmen. Um, so we'll sweep these to the side for the moment. I really like this, the samurai. Like, there's a couple of them that have like bendy swords or whatever, but you can run that under hot water for this type of plastic and it'll fix. Uh, if, even if you just play with it dry, it'll it'll change some. Um, but I mean, it looks like you've got shooting equivalents. Uh, you've got spearmen versus swordsmen. Uh, I don't know. I think they're cute. Um, everything is still like chibi-ish. Um, and I think that puts a fun spin on the characters. Uh, okay. 
so the last thing I want to cover real quick before I go into any type of alternate, uh, these are the models type of things. I want to go to the, the the Ronin. They're not generic heroes, but they're they're not uh, clan affiliated. Um, probably most impressive, other than I hate this fucking web she's on, uh, is the Spider Lady. And uh, if you'll notice, compared to the Samurai, she stands about twice as tall. Uh, and the Samurai are standard size. But we're going to go ahead and push them to the side. So I'll put her behind. Uh, but there, there's all kinds of cool guys. They're all very distinctive. Like, they've got a guy who does uh, ships. Or, uh, not ships. Uh, got a guy who does spear. Um, I've got an old lady with, like, a demon on the back of her head. I don't, I don't know what that's about. We've got the Kappa guy I was talking about. Uh, my gun girl. <coughs> which I'm super happy about because I really think that she's a really interesting character in this day and age. Uh, we've got a guy who looks like he's equipped with two oars. Um, there's, and, like, they really put some backstory into this world. Like, there's a guy, it's yawning, yep, he's got a baby on his back. Uh, like, that's his gimmick. Um, this is one of my favorites. He's got a basket on his head and a spear. Um, got a very traditional-looking samurai with the, the hat. Um, <clears throat> you've got the most unconventional guy. He basically looks like a gay nightclub rock star. Uh, I, I don't know what to do with that. Um, you've got a cat lady. Um, you've got, uh, E. Honda from Street Fighter, basically. Um, he's probably my favorite looking, like, traditional ninja. Uh, he reminds me a lot of Hanzo the Salamander from, uh, Naruto. Uh, and that's probably what I'll call him, even that's not his name. Uh, you've got a guy with an eye patch. Um, you've got these chicken guy or Tengu. Uh, he looks like, more like a penguin. But then you've got this chicken guy as well, uh, who looks different. And then you've got, like, an actual cat man. So they, they definitely have built into this world being super diverse. Um, you've got what basically looks like a super kaiken. you got a guy who's supposed to be blind. Um, you've got what I think is supposed to be like a rogue princess. Like, she's going to take matters in her own hand. Uh, the demon from the ring. Uh, of course, uh, Kenochi Candy, uh, and... Well, I say Kenochi Candy and Ninja Cola, but they it's Stealth Cola and... Uh, whatever her name is for, for this, because they're actually different. Okay, so after some new camera difficulties, because they're, again, they're new, I, uh, nah, whatever. Uh, I just, I want to point out on the board, uh, on that camera, but I just want to point out on the board how much space the purple actually takes up, how much space the gray comes up with. Um, the amount of models that they send you and this is a $300 donation uh, for the Kickstarter. They make their Kickstarters worth it. Um, they know what they're doing on that end, at least. Uh, I'm going to set these up just to kind of demonstrate how much you're getting, how much of the game there actually is. And you don't need all this. Uh, like the shrines, like if you are not a board game completionist, don't bother with the with the shrines. Just get the, the clans and play with those. Uh, if you play competitive, the, the shrines are not going to matter in the long run. Uh, they're, they're just going to be extra cheap guys to, to do a thing or two. So many cool models in here. Like the uh, the the green for the green guys, the demons are, or the oni are big bird guys with swords, uh, which is funny because most of the rest of the clan is focused on range types. They do have kaiken, but it looks like their specialty is bowmen. Um, whereas the spirit guys are all very foxy. They've got tails and and little masks and things like that. Um, oh, I didn't even break out the shrines. I put them over there. We'll get there. We'll get there. 
and then the, for the blue guys that threw water, their only are squids. They got giant hammers for some reason. Uh, I think they've got uh, especially like with their midoshis. So they're they're gonna be more magical. Um, also feels like they've got more indirect weaponry. Like there's like hooks and whips. Um, it's a lot of spears. Like stuff you can see fishermen use, but like just twist it a little bit. And you can see I'm quickly running out of room on the board, uh, which I find impressive every time I think about it. That uh, that they take up this much room out of everything we've got. Um, and the the, uh, the Kaiken, or not the Kaiken, but um, is this a gun? Oh, so they actually do have guns. And say the the fire clan here, I can't remember what they're actually called. They're very much about uh, like slashing, like they've got claws and swords galore. And then their Yajiri actually have uh, guns instead of bows. Oh man! So I could break out the rest. I have three bags of samurai. Jesus, that's a lot of samurai. Uh, for them not being a central part of the game. I can see that being an entire expansion later on. Just a number, uh, just uh, a samurai clan, if you will. So they'll put out samurai ronin or whatnot. Uh, a lot of the ronin already kind of are that. But uh, I want to finish this out just because I find it so fascinating at this point. Uh, oh, these are red guys. The, the colors don't match exactly for the shrines either, if that's important to you, uh, because they are different affiliations when it comes down to it. Um, and they're probably not going to go back in the bag after I'm done with this, so I'm happy to dump them out. See, and then, like, the other big damage part was this base. Uh, again, a little hot water will fix that. I'll glue the other guy, um, and he'll stand with a limp for the rest of his life. If you'll notice, you should even be able to tell from there that the, the colors of green are not the same at all for the shrine versus the, uh, the air clan. The air shrine versus the... Uh, Tachyon? I think that's what it is. Maybe it's Tachyon? Maybe they're time travelers. I didn't put the brown guys out. Man, okay, so... <laughs> uh, we're about to get creative here. The only are just huge. Uh, so we'll just push everybody up and we'll do the brown in the back. As you do. As you do. I don't know why you pick brown, but I think like after five colors, your choices just get really limited. Um, I would have probably preferred a yellow. Uh, I think that would have been just as easy to paint on. Um, and obviously you don't want to do black. I think it wastes like a lot of dye for the, the mold, the plastic. Oh yeah, and these guys have big monkeys with hammers for their own. Eat. So that's that's pretty interesting. And these are the guys with the baskets on their heads, like traditionally. Like this guy just has a flute, even so their Midoshi is like a special effects uh, guy versus uh, being able to do magic, white or black magic. Um. And they managed to put such different poses on every, all the all the actual clans. All the like the shrines are the pretty much the same. Um, okay, so going here, just looking at a camera from here, even without my glasses. I mean, you see brown all through here. We're going to move these guys a little closer. Orange, purple, green, blue, red, and all the gray stuff. This is a lot of stuff that I got in, and I can tell you that like I'm super happy about it. I'm so glad I backed it. I'm glad I could help out. Uh, what I know is going to be a great product. It's going to have a lot of people playing and enjoying it. I'm hoping that I can play and enjoy this uh, on my own as well as with uh, friends. 
Um, and I'm really looking forward to busting this out at some point and being like, let's play ninjas. But uh, this has been an unboxing for Ninja All-Stars. Until you see me next time, I am Camera, and that's game over. If you want to see anything else we're up to, go to click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.